All right, y'all. Back at it again. Second try for the Art and Talk Show, episode five. He was in the studio session earlier. That's why I couldn't uh, come on. So I started painting a little bit. Clearly, I ain't done. I'll probably be done by the end. Kane, what's up? Here go my boy, David. Yo. What's up? Man, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm I, I, white. I, I, how 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 was how was the session, man? It was good. It was good, and we really have something. Like we really got something really yeah. hot coming. I, like, I, I heard. I, I heard a few it's snippets gonna, of it. It was dope. What's the? Oh, uh, is that is that for is that for the new EP or is that gonna be a single? That's a single. Dope, dope, dope. Darren, what's up, man? What's up? Um, that's what's up. So, of course, those my followers who who's watching now. Of course, this is the art and talk show. So I will be doing some art, and I'll ask a few questions. And my brother, my BC brother David. He will be uh, giving us some musical talks and musical advice. So um, the first question, of course, or I want to say first question. Firstly, just go ahead and introduce yourself and kind of what you do and, and whatnot. So you go ahead and do that first. All right. So my name is David Givens. I am a singer, a songwriter from the good old state of South Carolina. Um, I am currently just leaving the studio because I'm working on my debut album, Electric Kingdom, Volume 2, titled Phoenix, um, which will be out in 2021. Um, outside of that, I'm a special needs nice. teacher. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So how is, how is that to go ahead and balance being a special needs teacher and being a musical artist? Because, you know, musical artist is a dream, and then being a special needs teacher you know that's a lot of work. Me, I know I'm a teacher myself, but I had I only have special needs. Uh, well, you used to have special needs twice a twice in the in the week, but you have them all the time. So how how is that being? How is that to balance that? How, how tough is that? It's tough, um, but you got to put in the work. Um, now with me, I do some work, some musical work during okay. class time. Just a little bit, not too much, because I want to keep my attention on the children sure. at all the time. Um, but I do some, but I do some musical. Do some... nice, nice. But when I get home, it's straight business. It's like there's no time to relax. It's I want to, I want to go take a nap, but I have to get paperwork done. I have to write a song. I have right. to rehearse. I have to go over um, staging because I got to learn learn how to stage whatever, whatever stage I go into. I got to learn to to adapt on whatever stage. I got to learn hand movements, um, choreography, mm -hmm. um, just just trying to get my myself ready because when you're ready, you don't got to get right. ready. You, you, once you're prepared, you don't got to prepare. So uh, mm -hmm. another question. So. So what would you, what type of advice would you give to, let's say, someone who wants to start getting into the music industry? What would be the first steps for them to go ahead and take uh, to get started? Well, number one is just do it. That's number one. Don't wait for someone to just, just don't wait for someone to just put yeah. anything in your hand. That we're not in that, we're not in that time frame anymore. We're not in the 90s. Where it's like, oh, you were talented. Let me give you an artist development deal or a record deal for, that costs up to $2.5 million. They're not right. doing that anymore. So you got to put in work to basically build a fan base, to build revenue, to get a catalog together that is right. substantial. Um, the other thing I would say is research, 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 research. 
do as much research as possible. If you're a songwriter, research your songwriters, research um, the rights of a songwriter, research um, what, what kind of rights the songwriter have. Um, if you're a singer, find a PRO, find um, the artists that inspire you, study mm -hmm. them. Um, if you want to be a manager, study, you know, right. law, entertainment law, study how different managers who are in that field that you right. want to be in. It's research. We have the internet. It, there's a lot of resources out mm -hmm. there right now. If you want it, you got to study for it. This is, right. this is school. School right. and practice. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, I always tell a lot of people, man, whatever it is that you're trying to do, do your due diligence in the research because if you go in there in any, in any industry uh, with lack of education on that, uh, whatever the topic is, you will get bamboozled, and they will swivel. They'll, they'll finesse you out of your money, you know, unless you don't know what you got. You got going on, but um, and even that, even even that is just people won't even talk to you if you don't know right. who they are. If you didn't right. do your work and, and don't even do your research, they're not going to take you seriously. If you know who they are before they even uh -huh. say their name, if you know what they mm -hmm. do, they are like, oh, okay, right, you're invested. Right. You did your homework. You know who right, I am. Right, exactly. All right, so so, what 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 is the process of, I guess to say, getting getting out there? Because I know you're, I know the last song, the big song you did, uh, that's on all the platforms, the big one single that you had. I forgot what was titled. Um, the fuck uh, when I the, fall. When I fall. Did that one? Okay, so that one. Yeah. So t so tell tell them the process of getting that one. Like, how did you market that one out, and like the process of that. single it was never supposed to be a single at all um okay. i had just gotten the final mix for the song um i just i just i sent to my friend miles miles uh, whitworth um also known as um uh, mileage he's a producer um dj mm -hmm. um i said hey can you can you can you just fix this because i don't have a mixer my budget is shot yeah. i don't i don't know what to do number one fact have a good budget have a good budget right, right. um You kind of chop, you kind of chop. Um, it's the weather, the weather is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You still kind, of, still kind of choppy, bro. Yeah. Um. Can you hear me now? Am I good? Okay, I Am I good? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Um. When I when putting it out there, I was just told put it out there. Just put the song out. Just, just put the song out. I wasn't going to. I was gonna wait. Yeah. Until it got closer to, to the EP's release. They're like, no, make this a single. Make this a single. Nice. And so I made a cover the same night. I released it. Um, I had seven days. I had seven days to to put the song out there to okay. get it for playlists. Um, to do Spotify playlists, you need two between two, four, um, seven to fourteen okay. days. Mm -hmm. So basically two weeks. So I, I got it out there in time. I was like, okay, we're gonna draw it off this on March seventh. Okay. Um. And the response to the song was pretty mm -hmm. positive. Like to this day, people are like still saying like that's the best song I've I've made that I've yeah. actually created. And it, and I sat and I sat on that song yeah. for two years. Two years. I wrote that in twenty seventeen, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. along with Crush and Pulse, but I didn't think I could do it. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't think I could do it. I thought it. I thought it was like it was too much. It was too high. I can't sing these notes. Yeah. Um, but I kept trying, kept practicing it. Mm. Um, and I, and so this 
when I said, okay, we're going to do the song, it's just going to be an album track, and it became a single, it was awesome. It, like, I can listen to that song backwards and forwards, and every time I get something new from it. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it, it, it was dope. I loved it. And I loved the video. Um, what was the process of the video? I seen the video of it, too. That was dope. I liked the video. <laughs> the video was dope. So what was that process? Okay. The video, there was zero budget. <laughs> um, that was not, that video was, there was zero budget in that yeah. video. Um, the video, um, there was an original concept for the video. The video was supposed to be shot here in Savannah, okay. um, where I'm visiting right now to record. Um, it was supposed to be shot in Savannah. Um, I had teamed up with another one of my friends from SCAD, okay. Savannah College of Art and Design. And we had this idea of, um, because it was supposed to branch into the, to the title of this album, which was supposed to be called mm -hmm. Phoenix. And it was supposed to be like the rise of the Phoenix, like, you know, the fall, ash, fire, transformation, yeah. rebirth. But because we didn't have time and Corona right. happened, I had to make a decision. Either we're going to sit here and do nothing with this song or we're going to make, or I'm just right. going to make something. So during the process of quarantine, I sat and I made videos for pretty much all of my songs okay um from hand like um with with when i fall i wanted to talk more about toxic okay. relationships mm -hmm. and domestic abuse but also a toxic relationship with our right. nation and i think that's where the last part people got confused like why are we talking about this in the last part but uh, the relation that we do have with this nation as African Americans, as people who are marginalized, such as, you know, LGBTQ, yeah. Yeah. Latinos, um, people who are of Middle Eastern mm -hmm. descent. Um, I wanted to express that in the ending part because right. it's real. And it's something that's, I'm really, that infuriates me about this country where they say, bring us your hungry, bring us, bring us your, mm -hmm. your homeless. Um, like they say that they said mm -hmm. that to us way back in the day when people were coming from L coming on Ellis yeah. Island and they were changing names right. left and right. right, right. Yeah. It's like you they, you tell us that this place is right. great and this place is awesome and it's and we can be ourselves, but when we're ourselves, you're telling us, oh, we can't do that. Right. We can't right. do that here. So so how how important um, is it? to put lyrics in your songs that you think that that will resonate with people like because you know a lot of people in the music industry they're doing like just whatever is common whatever is you know whatever but doesn't have a lot of uh content behind it so how how important is that to you to actually not just put out a bunch of quantity songs but quality you know with the behind the message i grew up in an era um, I'm a 90s baby. I grew up in an era where we had songs and messages. Right. Um, we had, you know, Power of a Dream by Celine right. Dion. Um, um, I Want to Run to You by Whitney right. Houston. Um, I Believe in You and Me, Hero. I grew up in that era of the 2000s, 90s, where songs yeah. had a message. Lyrical content is key mm -hmm. with me. I'm, I'm a fervent believer of lyrical content. If your song is nothing but gobbledygook, I am out. <laughs> Right, right. The only I'm out lyrically. Like my mind is down, is as out. I'm just probably going to enjoy enjoy the beat because high energy. Right. But as far as lyrics go, if you just got nothing for me, I'm I'm checked out, dude. Yeah, no, I feel I'm you, checked man. out. Yeah, I'm more. I'm definitely. I'm definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm big on the lyrics. I like a good beat, but I'm very big on the lyrics for sure. Um. So how how do you have do you have a team of cause I know you write your own lyrics but do you have a team of like you know producer slash maybe a co-writer or someone who makes beats or is it just all you? Um, I don't make beats. Um, I do write by myself, but I am starting to develop a team. I'm wearing multiple hats. Um, I do go to producers using Sound Better. Or beat stars or, or air bits, which is which again, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're starting out, there's nothing wrong because you all got to start somewhere. Um, just pay pay your producers though. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Um, but right now it's it's mostly me. Um, I got some help from my from my friend Frederick Pritchett. Um, I have help from my friend Alex from SCAD, Mileage, um, my my mentors, uh, Mahogany and Andre Armager, who have been essential in helping me tap into realness, being yeah. myself, being real, being authentic with my music. Um, and is right now it's me just handing you the business side of it, but I have some help. I have, I have, I have that's some good. help. That's good. And how, how important is it to actually reach out for help? Cause you know, there's some artists out there that feel like they can do it all by themselves and they don't want to reach out to people. Like what, like, why do you think, why do, why do artists have that? Why do you think they have that, you know, thought in their mind, like, oh, they, they got to do it by themselves. Because as an industry, we came up with this narrative and this story of, oh, I'm self-made, I'm self-made, I'm self-made. No, wow. you're not. These people had teams. They had wow. people surrounding them. Yes, mm -hmm. Chance the Rapper said, yeah, he did without, without um, a deal, but he had a team. Yeah, right. He had a team with connections. Mm -hmm. He was out here shaking hands and kissing babies. <laughs> right. You need a team. Yeah. You can't do it by yourself. Right, right. You can't. Yeah. I know that. And even though I'm doing the bulk of the work, which you're supposed to do the bulk of the work yourself, mm -hmm. but you need a team. That's you need right. people who can help you, people who have connections, people who right. know stuff. Don't go out here thinking that you know it all and you can do it all because you can't because you will fall flat on your face. Facts. I agree. Now you're right. Cool, cool. So, so, what is the what is the next next plans? I know you just did single, but what is the next plans for you? Like, what's the next thing you got coming up, um, song wise? Or I know show wise, show um, cancel, but song wise or album wise, what do you got coming up? Well, right now it's just planning stages and production. We we have now started full production on the album oh. um so we're trying gradually to drop singles um throughout not only this year uh -huh. but into next year when the album drops okay. um but i i'm gonna, I'm gonna get, let you in on a little bit of a secret okay i'm gonna let you in a little bit of a secret so it's not set in stone. It's just we're we're still in the still in the conceptual and idea planning stages, but I'm trying to go on tour next year. Dope. Okay. So something small. And I really want to start. I really want to end tour um at homecoming for Benedict next year. I want to end tour there. Dope. Dope, dope, dope. That'll be dope. Cool. That's that's awesome, man. Like so so lastly, um, two things. One, what are the top three things you would give to advice given to an up and coming artist? Mm -hmm. Top three things that you do. Okay. I gotta think about that one. Um <laughs> I'm gonna give the advice I would that no one gave me. Okay. But I'm gonna give it. To, I'm gonna give it to somebody else. Yeah. The first piece of advice I would give to a, someone who's a new artist is: don't, don't hide your true self. Don't cheapen yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't sell your soul for a buck. By that mean, by that I mean, don't, don't, don't allow people to put you in a box. And make you a stereotype. Don't do it. Just because the dollar sign say, "Oh, here's four million dollars," um, I need you to go in blackface and tip tap toe for watermelon watermelon pieces. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> just just don't. Right. Be be you. Like if you a pop star, be a pop star. If you a rock star, be a rock star. If if you do Gregorian plain chant, 
do that. Like, do that. Not everybody is, not everybody has to be a rapper. Not everybody has to be um, a gospel singer. Everybody don't have to be um, an R&B and neo soul star. Do you? Like, do you? The second piece of advice is do your research. Do your research and practice your craft. If this is what you love, if this is what you want to be, what you want to do, practice your craft. And that was a big lightning. <laughs> um, right. Practice your craft. Do what you do. Um, and you got to be you got to be addicted to this. You got to be like, listen, I'm a sacrifice. I'm gonna put my whole paycheck into this. I'm gonna save it. If I gotta go and just eat bologna sandwiches for a straight month, yeah. I'll do that. If this is what you want, if this is the business. Prices. The third piece of advice is check in with yourself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. That is the one thing that we don't do as artists. We do not check. We don't check in. We don't say, all right, where am I mentally? Where am I spiritually? Where am I emotionally? Am I okay? And if you don't feel like you can ask yourselves those questions, it's okay to get, get professional help. Don't be afraid to get professional help to say, hey, I need some help to talk, talk this thing out. The one thing that I, I hate to see, and especially in the Black community, especially with Black artists, is that we do not seek help for issues that we don't understand. Right. I agree. I agree on that. Because a lot of people, they, they're either scared of the, they don't want to be called a certain thing because they're going to see the therapist or a psychologist. Woo -woo. So, nah. I, I, Listen, I, people will call you everything but the child of God to the day you die. Who you, right. People talk about you. People talk about me all the time. The things I do, the things I say, they say, that's not what a black man should do. Well, mm. who say? Right. Who say? Right, exactly. Exactly. I'm going to do what I want to do because I'm me. Right. And that's how it's supposed to be. Cool, cool, cool. So, all right. So, lastly, and then we're going to wrap it up. Tell the people, all my followers, tell them, uh, one, where they can find you at on all social media platforms and, you know, also about your song or a song, multiple songs, or where, where they can get it at. All right. Um, so you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at David's World 1898. And if you want to ask me what 1898 is, I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, but it's David's World 1898 on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. You can also go to my website at www. David World, no S, David World dot US. So www dot David World dot US. As far as the music, you can find me on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Tidal, um, Pandora, Apple Music, iTunes. I'm pretty much everywhere, including YouTube. No, no. Um, the new single will will drop July 3rd. July 3rd. Right before July 4th. Look yep, out July. for that new single. Go follow him. Yeah, right so now. if you're not going to spend anything for all. July, for July, in July, uh -huh. the, if you're not going to spend anything in July, because we know we're doing a blackout, oh, you okay. can spend it on me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, the song is called Delusion. It'll be out July 3rd. Alright, delusional. Make sure y'all check that out. So, make sure y'all follow him. Download all the songs. Go spam his page. Um, thank you, Mr. Dave, for coming on and giving us all the advice. I learned something because I didn't know much about the musical in industry as well. Everyone, make sure you go follow him. Much love. This is the fifth episode of the Art and Talk show with my boy David, my BC brother. So, make sure y'all follow him. Much love. I highlight y'all. Peace and positivity. Stay blessed. Be grateful. And we're out. Deuces. Later.